Welcome back to the Proloworks channel. My name is John. I'd like to show you how I made this Sam Maloof inspired coffee table. I first came across this table online. It was actually a dining table that Sam Maloof made a while back. I figured that the design would scale down nicely as long as I kept the proportions correct. So I took some time in CAD and got it modeled up. It was a little bit difficult. There was some trial and error getting the correct radii for the curves, but I think I did an okay job of that. And here I'm just getting all my pieces rough cut. These pieces are for the base, and they're going to get milled down to about an inch and a half thick, whereas the pieces for the top, which I'll show later on, they get milled down to about an inch and a quarter. Taking eight quarter stock down to an inch and a half can be a bit wasteful if you do it all with the planer, so I did resaw these at the table saw. I got them down to about an inch and five eighths before taking the rest off at the planer. This is the first model that I drew up in CAD. It's just a series of lines and rectangles with the rough dimensions that I wanted to work with. You can see that there's a cantilevered action here, which differs from the Sam Maloof table I was working from, and I thought it would be a nice change of pace from the source material that would make it a little bit closer to my own. And you can see that I worked up and started to refine the design, adding different curves and radii, which looked nice to the eye. There was nothing scientific about this, just a bit of trial and error making sure it looked nice. This is the final design. I started to get some dimensions ready for my cut list. And as we move up even further, I added the tabletop with some edge profiles here. And then these are the final two pieces that I could send to my CNC router for the templates. And speaking of templates, here they are being cut out at the CNC router. I'm using a quarter inch spiral bit to cut them out of quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. I'm doing one each of the short and long templates, which I'll later use with a flush trim bit to get everything cut out. With my templates cut out, I can get these pieces cut to the correct final dimensions. All of them were about four to four and a quarter inches wide, and they were various lengths depending on which part of the leg they would become. There's a lot of parallels between this project and the squiggle bench I posted recently, and that includes the joinery here. I'm using the dowel max again to get all these pieces connected. These are 3 8 inch dowels, and I'm only using three of the five available slots because of the material that will be removed later on at the bandsaw. Oftentimes on a Maloof table like this, the joints will be 45 degree miters, though I opted for butt joints because that's what the source material was, and I wanted to mimic that and it's also easier. I think the downside of the butt joint method is a little extra waste compared to 45 degree miters, but that's not a big deal here. And to minimize some of the waste, I'm gluing this auxiliary piece on afterwards. And the grain direction is not ideal for this foot, so I did reinforce this with a dowel or two later on. Now I can move on to the flush trimming. I think ideally you would do this in a router table because it's a lot safer, but I don't have that at the moment. And you can see my work holding situation is not ideal as well. I had to do a lot of stopping and starting and getting this piece reclamped to the workbench so that I could get the router to where it needed to be. And I'm using a two inch long straight bit with a guide bearing, which is also not that ideal. I think I would prefer to use a spiral bit, but they're a lot more expensive when you need to cut uh, an inch and a half thick material.
I think most of these pedestal style tables are joined with a series of tongues and grooves with the center post and the legs but I opted to use dowels again because it's a lot simpler for me and I think it provides the same amount of strength if not more. I had to wait for some router bits to arrive in the mail, so I decided to get started on the top. These pieces are obviously too wide for my joiner, so I'm using the planar sled method, which I'll go into more detail in a future video. I used the jigsaw to add a subtle curve to all four sides and off camera I cleaned it up with the belt sander then I can move on to adding an edge profile with the round over bit. Since this tabletop is an inch and a quarter thick I used a 5 8 inch radius round over bit to give me a completely rounded edge once I rounded over the top and bottom. Likewise with the leg pieces I used a 3 quarter inch radius round over bit to get the same result. And you can see that I added this auxiliary block to the base of the router and this just added some support so that the bit would not tip and eat into the material. I also added a half inch radius cove to all four edges of the center post which will help the pieces blend together. The heavy roundovers did a majority of the shaping on this piece, which made it a lot more convenient to build than it otherwise would have been. I still had to do some blending of these joints, so I used a combination of rasps, files, and sandpaper to get everything blended nicely. I was a little bit too aggressive with the cove, so I had to do a little blending there, but uh, otherwise it wasn't too bad. The top is going to be attached with five screws. Three of them will be in the middle of the piece and then two will be on the short sides. Those short sides will receive elongated holes which you can see I'm just moving the drill bit back and forth and this will compensate for wood movement. For the finish I applied five coats of white bomb poly. I made sure to thin these down with mineral spirits because I find it a lot easier to control a thinner coat of finish than to do a thicker coat. In between coats, I sanded with 320 sandpaper and then wiped it clean with a fresh paper towel before adding the next coat. I'm pretty happy with how this table turned out. I think a lot of these techniques would scale up easily for a dining table, though I'm not sure the cantilevered design would work in a table that size. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.